the next talk is going to be by Chris Patterson, and it's going to be about hierarchical, hierarchical memories simulating quantum LDPC codes with local gates. Great, thanks. Uh, so thank you everybody for coming. Um, so I'm going to tell you about how we can get some of the advantages of quantum LDPC codes, but in architectures where our gates are uh, only geometrically local. So this is joint work with Anirudh Krishna and John Preskill, and uh, you can see our work on the archive. So first, let me begin by just defining a quantum low density parity check code. Um, it's simply one where each check is of constant size and each uh, qubit participates in a constant number of checks. And in particular, uh, we now know as of 2021 with the, uh, the work by Pentelev and Kalachev that good quantum LDPC codes exist. So that is one that encodes a linear number of qubits with a linear distance. So we care about the QLEBC property for a few reasons. Um, the first one is, is that we automatically have fault tolerance syndrome extraction. The way you can think about it is that uh, if we have an error in our syndrome extraction circuit, this can only propagate to a constant size region. And then furthermore, each qubit itself is only participating in uh, a constant number of gates. So there's, there's not too many errors that are accumulating. And then furthermore, the QLDPC property gives us kind of automatically a threshold under uh, depolarizing noise. So this is this work by Kovalev and Priyadko, uh, and then later used by Gottesman uh, in a um, uh, network I'll talk about soon. So um, the other thing that we usually get for free uh, is that the QLDPC property, uh, whenever we construct our codes with expander graphs, this lends itself to efficient decodable, de uh, efficient decoders. So in particular, um, we can oftentimes use a greedy approach to decoding, uh, just uh, flipping bits uh, to reduce the syndrome uh, until it gets reduced down to zero. So some of you may be familiar with the so-called uh, small set flip decoders. Uh, we'll see one that looks a lot like this uh, later today, I believe. Um, so finally, uh, God has been showed in 2014 that if we have a uh, code with constant rate and polynomially growing distance, that this allows us to do uh, fault tolerant computation with constant space overhead. So we'd really like to see, can we realize this in the setting where we're limited by only geometrically local gates instead of the, the long range gates that, that God has been assumed. So locality itself um, is a bit of a curse. Um, so what we do know is that there is various bounds on our code parameters. So if, uh, if we have the parameters that Gaussman needed, uh, the Tanner graph of our code must be an expander. So this is uh, uh, potentially quite challenging if we have a geometrically local architecture. So in particular, uh, I personally believe that asymptotically, any, phys any truly physical system will eventually uh, be geometrically local in some sense. Um, because if I have two agents with two uh, quantum degrees of freedom and they're separated by some distance, the uh, degree to which that you can couple these two things is will fall off as the distance. So this is quite bad if we want to implement something with a high degree of connectivity. It's also kind of good because this allows us to build isolated systems. So if we have a uh, system where as we scale it up, our no our, all our degrees of freedom are talking to each other, then our noise will be increasing as well. So it, it, uh, it does help us out in, in some aspects. Um, so non-asymptotically, we can take various approaches. Uh, for example, you can um, move qubits, like if you have ions or neutral atoms, you can use some sort of photonic things, or you can you know, just build long wires. Um, but ultimately, at the end of the day, um, our useful model is going to approximate uh, what we can do in practice. Um, and in particular, I'm interested in proving asymptotic theorems uh, where it will be geometrically local as you sort of uh, zoom out. So our main result is as follows. Uh, given a good QLDPC code family um, and noise that's uh, this particular model called locally decaying noise, um, you can just think of it as your gate errors happen independently or maybe they're allowed to have some small correlations but not, not too bad. Um, then there exists a family of uh, quantum CSS codes 
with uh, polylogarithmically vanishing uh, rate and relative distance. So almost as good as you can get, but not quite. And we have a syndrome extraction circuit that you can implement in two dimensions uh, with nearest neighbor gates. And we have a threshold. So in particular, you might see this, uh, that this is actually a bilayer uh, lattice, but that's fine. I can, um, I can emulate uh, this, this two layer connectivity with just a single layer at the cost of some slightly worse constants. Um, so here our below threshold scaling is almost exponential in the block length, but, but not quite. Okay, great. So now if I compare to what's been known before, on one hand, we have uh, surface codes. They have uh, 2D implementation um, with uh, nearest neighbor's gates, um, and the checks are geometrically local. So they're subject to the bravi pullen tarhal bound, uh, and consequently, we have sort of this vanishing rate and uh, not so good error suppression. Um, on the other hand, we have our good QLDPC code, and naively, you need uh, long range gates because the checks are not geometrically local, they're only local, um, but we have exponential error suppression and we also have constant rate. So our result kind of fits right in the middle here. Uh, we get nearly the best of both worlds. Um, we have a 2D implementation. Um, our checks are not geometrically local. So that's how we sort of have parameters that are seemingly incompatible with the BPT bound is that we don't satisfy the preconditions for this to apply. And we have this, this really nice rate and error suppression. So in general, you can ask, all right, well, um, I have my good QLDPC code. Let me just try to implement it in 2D without uh, any concern for, for thresholds. What goes wrong? So we know from uh, this work by Delfast, Offerland, and Tremblay um, that uh, there's a space-time trade-off for any good QLDPC code. Uh, in the syndrome extraction circuit, um, that if we don't have a um, large amount of insulas, then we're stuck with the square root and uh, depth of our syndrome extraction circuit, and there's uh, no way to get around this. And the intuition is quite nice. Um, essentially, whenever we, we need to embed into two dimensions, our, our tenor ref, and in two dimensions, uh, the two-dimensional, like a 2D graph, um, is not expanding. And in particular, there exist regions for which um, the number of vertices in this region and the boundary of the region are uh, differ by, by quite a lot, uh, by a polynomial amount. So in particular, here I found some, some region B uh, where its boundary grows as the square root, whereas the number of the sizes is linear. Um, however, uh, we know that if we have a good quantum code, um, the amount of connections outside the region, our graph must be, our tenor graph must be an expander. And so we have a linear number of connections that we need to, to implement. So this looks something like this, <laughs> um, where we have a large number of edges, uh, a linear number of edges, and we have this square root number of uh, gate or sort of um, connections that we can implement these things with. So that's how we get square root. So what we'll do, is uh, as a first step, we'll just try to implement this thing uh, naively. Uh, so what we'll, so we will start with our syndrome extraction circuit with uh, that requires long range gates, and we'll just implement the long range gates by by doing a ton of swapping. So we'll, in particular, for any single two qubit gate, we'll take the targets of that gate, bring them together, and then use our local local operations in order. And so kind of what this looks like is, is first let's, I'll construct this circuit later, but let's assume that we have, um, oh yeah, sorry. Um, and so in particular, what's gonna go wrong is, is that the depth is gonna be quite large. So we have our uh, square root n by square root n uh, lattice and we populate it with a bunch of qubits. And what's gonna happen whenever we do the swapping is if we saturate the dbt bound, we're gonna have this polynomial depth circuit. And in order to have a threshold, we need that the noise per unit time is constant. And so what we're going to do is um, we're going to replace every qubit by a surface code um, of size just large enough such that we get the, the constant um, 
uh, error per syndrome extraction cycle of the, the LDPC code. So first I need to construct for you this syndrome extraction circuit. So let me do that. So with the long range gates, the way we do it is for every operator, we're going to, for every check to measure, we're going to introduce an infilla, um, do some uh, entangling gates on its support and then measure the thing. Uh, so we just have to schedule the, the entangling gates. We can do this by uh, solving a graph problem known as an edge coloring. And this is efficiently solvable for a bipartite graph. And what we do is we simply, in each step, uh, for each coloring, we, uh, we schedule all the gates of the same color uh, in, in our time step. So one, two, three, and four. And then we measure our insulins. So we have a syndrome extraction circuit that uses the long range gates. Now we need to make it local. So uh, in particular, I'm going to um, implement sort of arbitrary permutations. So this uh, is this um, permutation routing problem. Um, so for a 1D graph, uh, a path graph, uh, you can think of it as we have pebbles um, with addresses that they need to go to, uh, and the vertices are also labeled, and then we permute them. So it looks something like this, and we just swap along the edges at every time step. So for 1D, um, this is actually quite straightforward to do. Uh, we just do a uh, what's known as an even-odd sorting network. So it's pretty standard techniques. And then we can use this result of Anakshine and Bomslog uh, from the 90s um, that tells us how to route, um, if we have a graph that's the product of two other graphs that we know how to route on, uh, we can use those as subroutines to route on the full graph. So here I've uh, drawn in two pebbles that need to go to some destinations. You'll notice that they need to go into the same row. So we're gonna take a step in G, a step in H, and a step in G again. And what this does, this first pre-routing step, is that whenever we take the step in H, they need to go to the same row. And so this pre-routing step kind of avoids this collision here, and this is all efficiently computable. So, okay, so now if you apply this to the 2D setting, uh, so uh, for the 1D line, we can just uh, use our even odd sorting network. In 2D, we can just route along the the rows, the columns, and the rows, because it's the product of 1D uh, path graphs. And we get our depth is uh, the side length of our o lattice. Okay, so that completes the syndrome extraction circuits uh, without any sort of surface code yet. So just for the surface code, uh, you have an L by L surface code. This has a 2D implementation. And the only thing you really need to know is, is that we can do Clifford operations with uh, polynomial uh, resources. So we can compare, we can measure, we can do our C naught, these sorts of things. And then below the threshold, we have this exponential suppression in this parameter. So all we're going to do is pick the side length of this thing to be polylog. Uh, you recall this expression here, the error rate uh, per constant time, or sorry, the error rate per syndrome extraction cycle um, of the inner code times the depth. Uh, and this can be made uh, if we pick the surface code size appropriately, this can be made an arbitrarily small constant. So you recover the threshold. Um, so now we can look at optimizing the, uh, the constants. Um, so everything in our paper is efficiently constructible. Um, and we particularly uh, spent a lot of time giving explicit layouts uh, that had good space overhead because we were hoping that maybe this is useful in practice. Um, so here's an example of one of our gadgets for swap. Uh, if you're interested, you can take a look at the paper. And we also have sort of um, a tunable trade-off between if you give us a gate of some length r, r can be constant, it can be growing, doesn't matter. Uh, we can use that to kind of make the world smaller by a size r. Um, so everything gets sped up by factor. And then there's this question of whether or not it's uh, practical. Um, so it, you may have seen uh, Nadine's talk yesterday. Um, this is this uh, soft output decoder for the surface code. And the, the point was to gain a, uh, to, to use this to more efficiently decode the outer code. So in practice, we're going to use some sort of belief propagation or something like this. Um, we use the soft output decoder to give a better prior to, to, to BP. And 
Um, in practice, it seems to be working pretty well, but we don't quite have, I would say, um, a firm idea of whether or not this is truly uh, the thing we should do. Um, perhaps with, uh, so, so certainly in the, the case of local noise, um, it gets, uh, local noise surface code is very good at recovering from, but you might imagine some sort of like rare events or something like this. So in the latest uh, experimental paper from Google, they saw these tail events that wiped out patches of qubits and then some kind of sort of concatenation really starts to make sense. Uh, but so I'll say that uh, we, we really need to look at this a little bit uh, closer and do some, some pretty hardcore simulation for sure. So just to summarize, um, we built these syndrome extraction circuits that required the long range gates. We embedded them, which incurred a blow up. Uh, so we constructed um, circuits that were optimal uh, according to the TPT bound. Um, and then we cured this noise that we introduced by having such deep circuits by concatenating with a small size surface. And the analysis itself, so I showed you something pretty sketchy. The actual analysis itself is sort of a coarse grained approach using uh, some techniques of Gottsman from 2014. And um, here's our parameters. And the one thing I wanna say about this is that to my knowledge, this is the first time that surface code uh, has been beaten in the geometrically local setting. So um, that's pretty nice. <laughs> um, and there's two observations that I think are quite cool is, is that, um, so one of the things, so, so one takeaway is, is that uh, your checks don't have to be geometrically local in order to have a threshold in two dimensions. Um, so this is related to a concept known as quantum locally recoverable codes, these QLRCs, uh, where you have sort of something that looks, it's a relaxation of LDPC, um, where you have each, um, you have some constant weight checks, but then you also have some larger checks. So you're able to recover, correct a lot of the errors using the local checks and then kind of the, uh, the high weight checks do the rest of the job. In our case, our code is not LDPC. It has some constant weight checks and then it has some log size checks whenever we can concatenate. And these log size checks were, were not doing as frequently. Um, and uh, these constant weight checks were measuring all the time. So this is also related to this partial syndrome measurement of where this is. The other thing is, is that uh, just constructing a memory uh, with uh, a high encoding rate uh, and good error suppression is kind of the bottleneck for constructing low space overhead fault tolerant computation in two dimensions. So we also uh, can use our memories as ingredients for sort of new threshold proof uh, with better uh, space trade-offs. With that, I'd like to uh, take any questions. Thanks. Hi, uh, thanks for the talk. Um, if the syndrome extraction depth is square root n, would that um, potentially be a bad thing if one is trying to do logical gates, uh, like it would slow the clock speed? Yeah, that's a great question. So in particular, if you have a single shot uh, decoder for your outer code, which we, we now have, you'll see in uh, perhaps a little bit, um, then actually the asymptotic scaling with uh, the error rate per sort of, uh, or of, of sorry, of the um, logical cycle with the error rate is actually the same as surface code, uh, you'll find. Um, because the, actually I think it's slightly better. Unfortunately, I can't do this live, but uh, it's, it's better, it's, it's as good or better than surface code uh, asymptotically. Uh, in terms of constants, it is worse. Okay. And maybe another qu related question. Um, could you imagine doing these long range uh, checks after the concatenation with the surface code using like a lattice surgery, like a uh, kind of constant depth thing, but is there an issue with that? Yeah. So you, 
Uh, one is that you can absolutely do this with lattice surgery. Um, it gives you worse constants, worse space overhead. Um, you would not want to do it in constant depth um, because uh, it's much harder to uh, most efficiently use all of the, um, you would like that your 2D lattice across every cut, you have the maximum amount of entanglement going across it at every time step. And with lattice surgery, it's very mm. hard to um, do this if you're measuring one stabilizer generator per, per unit time. I see, okay, thank you. Any more questions? Uh, Hi, uh, thanks for the nice talk. Uh, I have a small question on the rate perimeter. It's like one over log n square. And like in your previous slides, you mentioned that the surface cold should be that the, the distance should be as large as polylog n. So is this like a, you, you pick a specific distance of the surface cold and is the rate, you know, is the current rate on your slide the best we can hope for based on surface colds? Um, so there are ways to get better rate than what we have in our analysis. Um, for, in terms of a comparison to surface code, um, if you picked, a, so surface code is a two parameter family. If you picked uh, a single parameter family that matched our rate, uh, you would have very, very poor error suppression for, for surface code. I'm not sure if that answers the question. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, thank you. I have one small question, sir. Um, you like show that there is a threshold, but do you know like what the value of the threshold is? And is it like comparable to that of the surface code? It's equal to that of the surface code because you can always um, increase the inner surface code. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of a boring, boring number. Right, and the the fact that you have to route stuff along, like while still decoding the surface code, that doesn't decrease the threshold. Not at all. Any more questions? Um, doesn't seem to be the case. Then let's thank Chris again for the talk.